Hello again, this is George Kingsnorth doing a video tutorial for the BTEC Extended Diploma Level 3 in Creative Media Production, Unit 16 Film and Video Editing, primarily for students doing the course at Southern Regional College. In this tutorial we're going to start off by showing you how to capture DV from a video camcorder. This next section is specifically for the SRC students who use computers that are networked onto the SRC system what this means is that if they're using the Macs in SRC, if they use the home folder, any data that is stored in here will be deleted when they log off the computer. Instead, use the Macintosh HD drive, and on here, it's the data folder that you'll want to use. And once you go in there, go right-click and create a new folder and give it a unique name. And this is where you're going to store all your editing files and clips. Okay, so if we go back into Final Cut Pro, I've opened up a little project which I've saved, but I'm going to save it again. And to do that we go File, Save As, into the Macintosh hard drive, locate the Data folder, and into this time John's project, we're going to save a copy of that. Now I tend to like to keep the word Project in the title because it enables me to see that that's a project file and not a video clip. So I'll now go Save. So to start capturing what I'm going to do is create a bin and I'm going to call this tape 004 because the tape I am using is number 4 of a series of tapes. We then select the bin, go to file, set log, and you notice the clapperboard has dropped down to the bin and this means that any clip you now capture will go inside this bin. To start log and capturing we go log and capture from file. It opens up this little window. Before we access the clips on the tape, the first thing to do is to go to capture settings. Now for this particular thing we want to ensure that we're using Firewire. So we want the device controller to be Firewire PAL because we're using 25 frames per second in a UK system as opposed to the NTSC which is primarily American and Japanese. So it's Firewire PAL we're using DV PAL and 48 kilohertz sound, so that's okay. There are a range of other ones that we can use, but that's the one we're going to use for the time being. We go on to the scratch disk, and we're going to change that, so here we go. All my audio and video clips are going to go into a certain place, and I'm going to set that now. Now, at the moment, it's set to John's uh, projects, where I saved my project. Uh, George Project 1. Now quite often you may find that it's somewhere else but just make sure that you locate it from the, the Macintosh HD into the data drive and into your project folder that you just created and then go choose. And this will ensure that all your clips are located in the proper folder. And then go OK. We can now go back across to logging. Now I've just called that tape 004 which is actually the real I've just ejected the tape and I'm going to put the tape back into the camcorder and because I've done that this little message is now put up to say that we've inserted a new tape into the VCR and it's asking if we want to change the real number and we do so I'm going to go OK and we change the real number by clicking here and as it's tape 4 we just do that quite simple. Now I've al already been in here we're going to capture a clip 44 so we just type in there click on any other field to put the description into the name field this here tells us what the duration of the clip is once we've got in and out marks and this tells us where the tape is at the moment. So it's at 41 minutes, 57 seconds and 21 frames. We have a number of controllers here so I can rewind slightly. And I'm looking for that clip, the one before it and a wide shot. In total it's about 6 minutes worth of material. Now I've used clapperboards because I tend to record separate sound uh, and the reason for this is because the sound recorders can actually concentrate on the sound qualities while the camera person concentrates purely on the pictures. Now I've gone a little bit too far so I'm just going to use this one to scroll back a little bit. There we go. And we use this little button here to do the mark in or we could press I. And then I'm going to scroll on. I'll wind forward to the end of this shot. There 
And I've just gone past it, so I'll go back a little bit. Another way of speeding this up would be to have created a log sheet and simply typed in the in time and the out time and then just logged it, as I'm doing here. Now it's asking me if I want to log that clip. I do. And as soon as I do this, notice that the number here is changed to 045 and we have an alias or shortcut file that is not yet linked to anything onto the hard drive because we haven't captured anything and that's an offline file because there's a little red line going through the icon just there. Now we don't need to put another in point there because we already have that so I'm just going to scroll on to the end of the next shot. There we go. I'll just go back a little bit and then put a mark out a log go OK and the number changes again and now we have two offline clips there and finally to drag this to the end of this shot and that's another group of students so we just go to that point make sure we're at the end of that shot and I can click the stop button there and put the mark out and now now this has gone on to 047. I'm not going to log any more clips because I've, I've got all I want just here so I'm just going to click on the bin there and if I now go to batch it's telling me that I'm using 25 frames a second DV PAL 720 by 576 two channels of audio and it's going to take up 1.5 gigabytes of memory and it's 6 minutes 38 nearly 39 seconds so we click OK there's three clips that want from Real 4, go continue, and now it's starting to, to capture and it's doing a pre roll for the first clip. Okay, I'm just going to pause there. So when the logged shots have been captured, the video will stop and this little window will pop up to say that everything is done. You can then click finished. We can also close down the log and capture window and then the files that had the red line through it will now have no red line and just be the blue icon that we see here indicating that they are now linked to the material on the hard drive. So just so you can see where this is if we just move the viewer down and go to an open window on the finder we can see the clips are in the Macintosh HD data folder and John's projects folder. Here we'll find three new folders the audio render files, capture scratch and render files folder. Inside of the capture scratch folder you'll find another folder called George project 1 which is what we save the project as and inside this we'll find the three clips that were captured a short time ago. Now if we go right click and move to trash uh, to delete one of the clips and then click on the browser you'll see the red line go through the clip shortcut. This indicates that it's no longer linked to a clip in the finder folder. One simple way of actually reconnecting this is to have a clip backed up in another folder and to drag it into the appropriate folder and then to reconnect it through Final Cut Pro in the browser. And to do this click on the clip in the browser go to File, Reconnect Media and in the Reconnect Files window do a search and the system will look for any files with the same name on all the connected hard drives and then present them for you. A file has been chosen this time in George's projects instead of John's projects so it is important to make sure that you select the right folder so the clip in Final Cut Pro is linked to the right piece of media. Once we know we have the right media we then click on choose and connect and we'll see the red line disappear on the clip inside the browser of Final Cut Pro and we're now ready to begin editing. That's the end of this tutorial in which we've been looking at how to capture DV from a VCR or camcorder. In future video tutorials we'll be looking at how to capture HDV and also for transferring files recorded on a digital SLR. Thank you for watching this video tutorial.